uh, mentally wise, you think you're in a good spot. And as soon as you realize you're not, it's already too late. Um, and I think that's where friends and family and being kind as well to each other and yourself. Because um, if you don't feel well, if you don't feel good, it's okay to talk, you know. House of Rugby Ireland, here on Joe, together with Guinness. Game changed. Hello and welcome to a very special bonus episode of House on Rugby, here on Joe, together with Guinness. And I am delighted to welcome the one and only CJ Sander, Munster and Irish legend. Um, CJ, welcome. Welcome on to the podcast. Well, thank you very much. I'm uh, glad to be on you. I've tried a good few times to get on, you know, but uh, thanks for the invite. Pat's not a fan of the of the Munster men, you know. I, as a Munster woman, I tried really hard to to bring up the Munster contingent and and a good one to start with. And um, CJ, I suppose it's been a a week of ups and downs. It's obviously with the game on on Sunday, on Saturday, and then yesterday just getting nominated for Guinness Six Nations Player of the Championship, along with some amazing contenders as well as winning Munster um, Player of the Year. So ups and downs. Yeah, um, you can. That's probably the roller coaster is probably the best way of describing it. You know, uh, yeah, disappointed after Saturday. I mean, um, we had a great opportunity, and and we were not fo- not far off from it. Um, we just made a few mistakes, and then, yeah, waking up on Sunday, um, and then Sunday evening, good few news, good news, and then yesterday, yeah, it's um, these honors don't really come along um, easy, um, and I'm very. Yeah, I'm just proud and it's, uh, it's a big achievement for me personally working towards that goal and uh, for my family as well. And I'm just honoured, you know, it's, um, it's, it's a, great, it's a great, great achievement for our family. Yeah, I suppose you have to look at the positives of all every bad situation. And um, I suppose going on to the Tackle Your Feelings campaign that you're, you're involved with, I'm also an ambassador, so it's great to yes. be a fellow ambassador. You, uh, you showed it off this year, yeah, exactly. I think the lads really rallied around me, you know, and, and, and wanted to make me part of the squad and part of the, the families, even inviting me to their, to their homes, you know. And the Irish culture is just that everyone is part and everyone is welcome, and let's make it great for them. I am CJ Stander, and I am taking control. So we've all told our stories, and I suppose we all know the work that Rugby Players Ireland do and it's not just on the field, it's the support network that they provide us, I suppose, in all aspects of our life. Um, but I suppose mental well-being is one, is one aspect that I feel as a player, I was like, no, I don't need to know about that. Like, what, what was your take on that originally? Yeah, and I think <laughs> playing this game, both of us and all of us, you know, we, we try to be tough and just put those things aside and just go, oh, it's just about rugby uh, and the mental side. I thought anyone would look after itself, but it doesn't. Um, it's like training and it's just like life. You need to constantly work on it, to make sure you're in a good space and make sure um, that you've, you've got support around you that can, can help you when it gets tough, you know, because I've, I've said this today earlier that uh, mentally wise, you think you're in a good spot and as soon as you realize you're not, it's already too late. Um, and I think that's where friends and family and being kind as well to each other and yourself because um, if you don't feel well, if you don't feel good, it's okay to talk, you know, you've, you've said in your story, and it's okay to talk and say to someone, and it's okay to ask someone if they're not okay also, you know, because sometimes you probably won't get a reaction, and sometimes someone will just go, oh, this is exactly the question I needed to get my feelings out there, you know, and um, I think it's a great campaign, and um, it made uh, things for me a lot easier, personally. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think what you're saying about that support network and having the people around you, like who are the people that you find, I suppose you've noticed as well over the last few months, you know, going through this tough time, you were at home obviously for a lot of that, but who are the people, who are the go-to people that you go to, be it your wife or be it, you know, your teammates, but who, who is your, in your closest support network? Yeah, I think my wife is probably the closest one, you know, I've had some unbelievable chats with her just walking and not feeling 100% and she, she actually draws the line. She goes, or you talk about it and you sort it out or you get over yourself and then move on. So she's uh, quite strict that way. But uh, teammates-wise, um, yeah, Olsey, uh, Keith Olsey is someone I would uh, talk about rugby, especially form-wise and Andrew Conway in the last few years. And um, Johan, our head coach as well, his, his door is always open to have that chat, you know, and then just my family has been always there, my parents. Um, I believe for me personally, I need honesty and truth, you know, so uh, um, as long as I can get the 
uh, straight truth from them after a game, then I know, okay, this is how they feel and they mean a lot to me and I've got respect for them. So it's very important you get that that small support structure that you can always get, you can always count on. I think we need more people like your wife in the world to tell people to just uh, move on with it. Um, that sounds amazing, really good advice. Um, interesting that you mentioned Johan as well there. And similarly, you had that really good bond with Axel when, when he was your head coach. And you mentioned him in your video as being one of your mentors when you first arrived to Ireland. And I never knew that you didn't speak English on arrival into that monster dressing room. But what, what kind of support and, and how did Axel, I suppose, I'm not going to say he molded you into the player, but what did you learn from him coming to Munster at the very start? Yeah, I think um, rugby-wise, you know, Axel was, uh, played a massive role in changing my game because coming from the Sun Hemisphere, playing a different game, I had to work on tackle technique, go lower for the chop um, and work right, and then my ball carry as well. And then I think we were really hit a note with each other was when I was captaining the side and um, we were not doing well as a squad or as a team and uh, he was under pressure, I was under pressure and he, um, we had a lot of conversations about my leadership and just um, us both as, as people, you know, um, where we can be better and how we can be better, how that's going to be better for the squad, you know. So he was always a guy that I can uh, go to his house or uh, just even playing two boys out the back he had the squad over once uh, or few, not once a good few times for a uh, few drinks and pizza and uh, we played with the boys and that made a big difference you know uh, he knew how to work with people and how to get the best out of them and sometimes um, it's not training and it's not um, just being a hard guy and or being a hard person just pitching up sometimes you just need to get that family bond and um, that conversation with each other because as soon as you know where someone comes from and what they stand for, then you can actually start bonding and, and work from there. But if you don't, um, if you don't have that connection, then um, it's difficult to have a bond, you know. So um, he made it. He made my transition easy. Uh, by first, he developed me as a player, and then molding me as a person. He did mold me as a person. Um, he took time out of his coaching career that he he, he didn't have to do it. But he sat down with me and he wanted to understand where I come from. And um, I just remember a great story sitting here. Now. It was my wife's birthday. And uh, like I, we normally just talked about rugby. And suddenly there's this massive carrot cake just arrives at the table. And he's like walking out saying, like, happy birthday. And like, John Marie. And like, he didn't, like, I didn't even knew, I didn't even know that he knew it was her birthday that day, you know. So just, um, yeah, he was a great, great guy to, uh, to sit down with and have a chat. Yeah, it just shows, I suppose, and I, I suppose the emotion of those two, the two main moments that stick out, I suppose, looking out from the outside in is the initial game in Glasgow where the number eight jersey wasn't worn. And then the second day in Soldier Field where obviously the number eight was made with the players. Like they must have been, like they were emotional for people looking from the outside in, but it must have been just a different story for you as a player and obviously a lot of the other players who would have played, played with him or played under him. Yeah, it was uh, two. Um, yeah, that week of the Glasgow game was. Oh, but we didn't really train. Uh, but that there was something special in the team. You know, we knew that um, that Axel would never want us to uh, not play and give away the points. You know, so uh, we we stuck with it and we made his name proud that day. And I think it was very very emotional. Afterwards, you could only feel the impact it had on the squad and the team. You just felt tired and like it was it was such a big month almost. You know, and then. Going to Soldier Field, standing in at eight, it's weird. Like there was probably just a wind blowing that day in Chicago, but like I could just feel, like you could just feel that connection. You can feel there was something going in around that, and um, you could feel that he was there. He was there, hundred percent. And uh, I don't know what the other guys say or how they felt in that game or what was their motivation, but I knew Axel was uh, pushing me along in that game for sure. Well, whatever it was, it worked. Um... Going back to those tackle feelings again, and you're just such an example for people who have been told they're not good enough, and people who've been told, look, you know, you're not big enough, you're not, you're not going to make it here. Like, what was your original like, initial reaction? Right, where obviously you, you, I think the normal person would take time to themselves and feel sorry for themselves, and eventually, you know, cut themselves on. But was there a time where you said, look, this is it? Like, I'm not going to bother trying anymore, or what kind of a mindset? did you have to be able to get from there to where you are now? Like there must have been a few difficult decisions and, 
and a few difficult thoughts going on as well at the same time. Yeah, I, um, I, like the first time I heard it, I was like, oh, okay, this is probably just a thing that's gonna fly over, and then it just kept on happening constantly. And you know, when you get shot down so many times, you reach um, bottom, like rock bottom. It's just, it's just how it works. You know, you can't. Um, doesn't matter who you are. I don't believe is a mindset that can change that. You know, so there was a rock bottom stage, and I had difficult conversations with my uh, wife, my girlfriend, then, and uh, with my dad, and. We actually just decided that, well, this is it. I'm just going to pack my things and start farming. Happy days. Um, that's probably just a new direction I needed. And uh, I'm actually glad, looking back on that now, that I got a, had a roadblock like that in my career because that shaped me into actually sitting down and thinking about what can I control in situations and what's the right way to go at it, you know. And uh, looking back at it now, it was actually just a small uh, bump in the road. Um, and at that stage, it felt like a mountain, but I took some time away from it. And um, I'm happy to learn out of that, that situation because a lot of things occurred again in my career after that. And that gave me the, the right tools just to go, boom, okay, this is the way we're going to deal with it. I'm going to do this and get out and get out on the other end, you know, with your head up. So, um, yeah, tough, tough times, but um, t- uh, support network is, was massive in those times. Yeah, and I suppose your coping mechanism there as well, being able to get through it the first time and then identify that it's happening again through other, like everything isn't plain sailing and people, if people don't see the struggles and the bumps along the way as well that you have to overcome to get there. And um, what advice, like on that same note, like there's a lot of players out there that have been told, you're not going to make this rugby player, you know, this isn't your path. What advice would you give to those players? Because there is plenty of the men and women that have been, you know, told they're not good enough along the way. Yeah, I think uh, advice is, again, sometimes, because rugby um, is such a sport where a few guys, or actually one guy decides your your future, um, and it's not in your hands that it's difficult to control that situation. Um you're going to come to a roadblock uh, or a wall in front of you. That's the easiest way for me just to describe it. And you're going to have to make sure um, you've got the right support structure around you firstly that you can get advice from and talk with so that you can get around this um, and control the situation. Because um, there is always another direction to go towards. You just have to have the right mindset and the right people around you to put you in that way and that in, in your right way. and, and just keep on, um, yeah, um, telling the naysayers that um, that you're better than that. I absolutely agree. Um, going back to the rugby, as a proud Munster woman, I am delighted at how they are doing so far. Four out of four. They're playing, playing lots of exciting rugby with a really exciting halfback partnership of the young guns, Casey and Healy. You must be raging, Healy is getting all, or Casey is getting all those men of the matches now that you're not, that you're not playing. <laughs> And you've really taken all the glory there and taken all the limelight. But in all seriousness, it is great to see that, you know, energy and the the enjoyment that Munster Rugby seems to be playing with at the moment. Yeah, I actually uh, texted uh, Craig last night and said to him, he needs to calm down, like, uh, <laughs> yeah. putting me to shame. But I'm actually very delighted for him. You know, he's he's one of those guys who work very, very hard. And all the young guys coming through, they, they're actually setting the standards. Uh, scary. Uh, coming from me, being one of the older guys, because I know coming back, like there's going to be hard work to be put in to get, make sure um, I get that place back in that jersey, you know. But getting back on Jumanster and playing well, I think it's a process of, of a few years now under Yuan, um putting the right few things in the right spot, you know. I think we were unlucky with uh, injuries uh, at the end of last year or coming back after COVID, you know, in a few games. But um, with Steve, um, well, yeah, and, and Wig, um, we are, and JP, there's a good structure. Um, he's make, they've made it easy for the young guys to come in and sell in the squad. They're getting game time and they're actually lead, they, they're developing people and leaders out of the players, you know. So they're giving us an opportunity to grow as a person and um, I think that shows in the way we play. So, yeah, four out of four. I don't think I've been at Monster. We, we've had that before. I might be wrong. I think might be 2015 was the last time but that's five years you know so I always believe that if a person is happy at home at training Sarah is going to be a breeze yeah and I suppose there's a mix of um, youth and experience there and I suppose 
that means you'll end there the mixture of experience that Munster, you know, are thriving on at the moment and lucky to have him here um, while the South African season isn't going ahead at the moment. So having someone of his calibre to mix in with those young guys just creates a, a different level and a different dimension of, of rugby. Yeah, he's uh, Damien's came into the squad, come into the squad and uh, he's one of the most talented guys I've worked with um, and he's one of the guys who's a calm, so calm that you wouldn't think that um, he's just won a World Cup, or he's, he's he's one of those guys that you can really sit down with and underst- understand the game more. But how he sees it, you know, because he brings such so much calm as you can just see in that last offload against um, Cardiff and loss uh, and yeah. against the Dragons that step he gave. It's just things that just happens in the moment for him, you know. So yeah, he brings that calmness and he brings that uh, that seniority that we we need, you know. And um, I think it's good that uh, we. We can bring guys like that in to uh, give experience to guys that uh, is almost at that level, but just need a little bit of advice. And I think there's a few great signings we had over this over the last few years. Absolutely, and I suppose he came to Munster on the back of that World Cup win last year. And I suppose you've Grand Slam wins with Ireland. You've more than almost 50 caps played with Ireland. But I suppose there has to be a bit of pride as well from your home country. No, like winning that. Winning that World Cup, obviously disappointing that Ireland didn't perform the way we would have liked to. But, you know, I suppose some bit of pride of well in that South African win. Yeah, I, uh, I played with, I'd say, probably half the squad, you know. So knowing where they came from and all the hard they worked to get there um, would, have been, would have been great to uh, bring that cup uh, back home to Ireland, you know. But um, again, disappointments here and there, mistakes. But... Of the point, uh, back to them, yeah, um, massively proud of the players and, and their families, you know, because they have worked hard and it doesn't matter what team won it. I've, I've, I've been lucky enough to be to one World Cup and uh, this World Cup is a difficult, difficult competition. So um, even if it doesn't matter what team it is, to win it is special. And uh, yeah, there's surely a bit of proud there going through. It is. Well, CJ, it has been a pleasure to have you on today and thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. House of Rugby Ireland, here on Joe, together with Guinness. Game changed.